In today's video, we are gonna be talking about exactly what smart collections are in Lightroom. So you guys are probably wondering, what makes a collection smart? Is it just smarter than all the other dumb collections? And of course, um, it is a lot smarter. Now the reason is because you can have certain photos automatically appear in the smart collection based on things like star rating, pick or no pick, um, camera, lens, focal distance, whatever you want, you can have these photos automatically appear in these smart collections, which is really helpful for organizational purposes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to use smart collections and a few of my favorite tips and tricks when using them to better organize your Lightroom catalog. So we're gonna jump right into Lightroom. I'm using the Lightroom Classic CC version, so I look forward to it. Here we go, let's get started. So when I am making smart collections, I like to do it in the library module here rather than in develop, which is what you usually work in when you're working with photos. So I can, you can see here I'm in the library module and if I go over here, you can see I have collections. So I want to make sure this box is dropped down. It may be closed like this. Just make sure you click it to drop it down. And then I can go in and click this plus button. And now I can create a smart collection. You'll see that you have the option to create a collection, a smart collection or a collection set. Now collection set is just an organization of collections where you can hold many collections. It's just like a big folder uh, that you can put other little folders in. A collection is just a regular collection to store photos and then a smart collection is what we're gonna be talking about, which is smarter than a regular collection. So I can go ahead and click this here to create a smart collection and I get this that comes up. This may look a little daunting at first in terms of how it works, but it's actually quite easy. So we can go ahead and create a name for this. Now let's call this smart collection. Um, let's say good photos from last trip. You can call it whatever you want for anything that you want to call it. Um, and I'm just going to name it that. And now you can go down to match all of the following rules. You can change this to all, any, or none. And so now I have the option to change what rule each photo has to follow to be put in this collection. Now the most simple way to do this is rating. So the rating is equal or greater to, we can say one star. Um, and if I do that and I click create, then any photo that's one star or better will appear in this collection. Um, let's say just for purpose of this video, because I already have some photos that are one starred, let's say five stars, just because um, then I can get fresh photos in this folder. So I'm gonna click create. Okay, so now you can see that I've created this smart collection that says good photos from last trip. Again, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. That's just what I'm gonna call it because that's why I'm gonna sort these photos. So I'm gonna go up to my previous import here because these are the photos that I imported from the last trip. And I'm gonna scroll down and find the good photos. Uh, that I potentially may want to edit. So maybe I like some of these of the tree. So I'm going to go click here and add some stars. You can see when you click on a photo, you've got options here uh, to add stars or uh, however many you want is possible to add. So I'm going to click here, which is going to five star this photo. And now you can see that when I go down to this folder here, this photo that's been five starred has automatically been placed in there. So you may say, well, that's not really that helpful when you could just drag and drop these into a regular collection. But the reason why it is really nice is because I could go through here and five star multiple photos quickly and then just keep coming back to that collection. So you can see that they keep being added and I can just keep going through and maybe I wanna five star this one and they just keep being added. So you can see it's a way to improve the speed of your workflow to add them to that collection. Now I can go back in and look through all these. And let's say that I decided I actually didn't like this photo up here. I could reduce the amount of stars on that one back to one and it would get rid of it out of this smart collection. So that's the most basic way to use this. A lot of times I'll use uh, one star for a smart collection or two stars. Now the thing about this is that if I was to go into any of my other folders and five star photo, it would also appear here. So any photo that has been five starred will be here. Now, one of the really cool things with smart collections is the amount of options that you can have. So let's create another one. Let's look at some other rules down here. When I click this, you can see that I've got lots of other different rules that I can use. So let's go down here and go to camera info and why don't we go to focal length. So focal length is, and let's say um, 18 millimeters. And we're gonna call this wide angle shots. And let's also say, let's add one more rule. And let's say that the camera info shutter speed 
is greater than, um, let's say 0.5. So 0 0.5 seconds. So now this smart collection is gonna show me all photos at a focal length of 18 millimeters with a shutter speed of longer than 0 0.5 seconds. So I'm gonna click create. That's gonna take a second to load. And now you can see that we have all of these 283 photos that have populated this uh, smart collection here. So super cool way to organize your photos. Um, let's look one more time at a few of the other options that you can use. If you selected options that you don't want, you can just click this minus box and you can go through. So you can do things like the capture date or edit date. You can go in, do the camera serial number or the a particular lens and aperture and ISO. Um, you could do a location if you tag the locations on your photos. You can do metadata such as the title, caption, or keywords if you add those to your photo. I personally don't, but you may. Um, you can go through and do develop so you can have photos that just have adjustments or edits. Um, I mean, there is just an absolutely ridiculous amount of things that you can do to your photo and you can have multiple different rules and you can select it so that you have to match all any or none of the rules so let's say we had three rules we could select to match any so if it only matches one of the three it'll still appear so tons of different options really great way to organize your lightroom catalog and to find photos so that covers exactly how these smart collections work all right, everybody, just like that, you can see how smart collections can be incredibly helpful to speed up your workflow and to help you find and sort through photos. I absolutely love using them and creating them all the time for finding certain photos, finding maybe certain photos I shot with different lenses or different focal lengths, whatever it may be, you can see how this tool is really, really helpful to organize your Lightroom. Um, and organized Lightroom is gonna make your workflow so much faster. I know so many people do not like sitting in front of the computer and editing. So any way you can speed that up possible will really help you out. So give Smart Collections a try. Let me know what you guys think. And I wanted to thank you guys so much for checking out this weekend's video. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, please make sure to like and subscribe to support my channel. Thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you guys next weekend. Have a good one. Bye-bye.